Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back and this is lecture number 45 and we will be talking about or continue our discussion on linear transformations. And today we will uh, see some work problems where we will find out the kernel and the image and their dimensions. So here just to recall from the previous lecture what we have uh, seen there that f is a linear map then this kernel f is defined as uh, the uh, vectors from x. Uh, whose map is 0 in this uh, vector space y and the image was uh, all the elements of y uh, there existed x here in, in this vector space x for which exactly this y is the map. So, f x is equal to x. So, these were the two definitions for the kernel of f and also for the image of f and we have also seen that this rank of f is nothing but the dimension of the image of f and the nullity we define as the dimension of the kernel of f. So, with these definitions we start now here with the example where we have taken this f a linear map from r 4 to r 3 is a linear mapping which is defined by this relation f maps this uh, element which is from r 4. So, x y z and t and it maps to x minus y plus z plus t the second component here 2 x minus 2 y plus 3 z plus 4 t and then this is the third component uh, 3 x minus 3 y plus 4 z plus 5 t. So, this is the element from R 3 and this is the element from R 4 and that is what we said here this f maps uh, an element from R 4 to an element in R 3. And what we want to now find, we want to find uh, basis, a basis and the dimension of first the image of f and then second for the kernel of f. So, we need to find what is the image and what is the kernel of f. So, here first let us talk about the image of f. What we know from the previous uh, lecture that once we have the elements in in uh, vector space x which span this vector space x. So, for instance here we have this r 4. So, we know that these are standard basis because they are simple to work with. So, let us take with the standard basis here that this e 1, e 2, e 3, e 4 these are the standard basis from uh, r 4 and we know that theorem that result from the previous lecture that these e's span this x uh, r 4 then this f e 1, f e 2, f e 3, f e 4 these are the vectors in r 3 and they will span actually the image of uh, this uh, mapping f. So, what we know now that this f e 1, f e 2, f e 3, f e 4 they will span the image f. So, that is the result we have now. Uh, that these are the vectors which span the image f. And now, let us compute what are these f e 1, f e 2, f e 3 and f e 4. So, here f e 1. So, e 1 just remember that e 1 is nothing but uh, in this case uh, these are the standard vectors from r 4. So, these are thus the 1 0 0 0 from r 4 the e 2 will be 0 1 and 0 0 uh, e 3 will be 0 0 0. So, here 1 now and 0 and e 4 will be all these first 3 components 0 the this is the fourth one. So, we have these standard basis from r 4 and now f if we apply on this e 1 here. So, what will happen? So, 1 this all zeros. So, we will get 1 from here 
and then this is anywhere 0. So, the 1 from here will get 2 all these 0 and 3. So, this E 1 will be mapped to this 1, 2, 3 elements. Similarly, the f of E 3, E 2 if we take E 2 then the second will survive here this minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3 that is the, the map of this f uh, of this E 2. Similarly, f of E 3 and f of E 4. So, we have these vectors here 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3, 1, 3, 4 and 1, 4, 5 from uh, this R 3. And we know now with this uh, with the theorem we have studied already that these vectors will span image f and what we want to find out we want to find out what is the image f what is what are the basis of image f and what are the, the what is the dimension of image f so we already know that these four vectors will span image r3 but they are they they are not the the basis because this uh, this is the spanning set and the spanning set may have some linearly dependent vectors so what we have to now extract out of these vectors what we have to collect only the linearly independent vector. So, we have to see now how many linearly independent vectors we have in this spanning set and the number of those linearly independent vectors will be the dimension of the image f and those linearly independent vector among all these four will uh, form a basis of the of the image f. So, here now let us uh, do this so, uh, these may not be the basis. So, now we have to just find out that how many of uh, these vectors are linearly independent. So, to do so, so we have this 1, 2, 3, these 4 vectors. We will, uh, the idea is to have, uh, we can put them in, in the column for instance, 1, 2, 3, the second vector here minus 1, minus 2, 3 and 1, 3, 4 and then 1, 4, 5. Having this vector here whose columns are the given vectors, we can now reduce it to this row uh, reduce echelon form and from that re row reduced echelon form we can find out that uh, which vectors are linearly independent and which vectors are are linearly dependent and we have seen one such example before in previous lectures. So, now to find out the linearly independent vectors out of it, this we, what we can do we can place them in the in this matrix here as the the columns and then we can reduce it to the row reduced echelon form which uh, should not be difficult here in this case because as a first step we will set uh, these two elements to 0. So, the first will uh, first row will be as it is the second one here will become 0 the 2 times of that this is also 0 2 times this will give 1 here 2 times we will get 2 here now the 3 times of the row 1 we are subtracting here. So, this will be 0 this will be again 0 and the 3 times. So, this will be 1 and 3 times this will be 2. So, this is uh, the, the one uh, step of this row reduction process and now we will uh, set this 0 with the help of this row 2 and we will get this matrix which is given already there. So, what we have that this is the row reduced uh, echelon form and in this case now we will find out the these pivots here. So, we have this one as a pivot and this is also a pivot here only there are two pivots. So, this column number 1 and the column number 3 they have the pivots. So, straightforward we can pick the column number 1 here and the column number 3 and they will be linearly independent. This column here does not have a pivot this does not have a pivot and one can show that uh, these two columns depend on this column number 1 and column number 3. So, uh, this was a very systematic approach to find out the linearly independent uh, vectors here. So, now with this we have we can take this column number 1 which has the pivot here. So, the corresponding this column number 1 and we can take this column number 3 and they will form the basis. So, the dimension of this uh, image is going to be 2 and the basis uh, these two uh, vectors. So, 1, 2, 3 and 1, 3, 4 this will form the basis of the image f and uh, the dimension of the image f is, is 2. Now, getting to the kernel of f. So, what was the kernel of f? Now, we are looking for the elements in 
in x whose uh, whose map is 0 in in y. So, that means, we are looking for these elements x y z t uh, I mean these vectors or such vectors whose image is 0. Uh, and now to look into this now what is f x y z t from the definition we have uh, that x minus y plus z plus t must be 0 and this was the second uh, component of this uh, and this was the third component of, of this uh, vector in R 3 which uh, is the map of this f there and that should be equal to 0. So, the 0 0 0. So, if uh, again here the f of this was was nothing but these vectors f this was the first one then this 2 x minus 2 y and so on then 3 x minus 3 y and so on and this we want to be equal to 0 uh, 0. So, from here we get actually these three equations these uh, three equations and we want to now solve these equations to get all possible values of of these x y z and t and this is nothing but the null space of the coefficient matrix uh, of the coefficient matrix of this uh, of this system of equations and that is nothing but the kernel of f. So, the the null space here of this coefficient matrix will be the kernel of f because the what is the kernel of f all these vectors here from R 4 whose image is 0 they are in R 3. So, what do we need to solve we need to solve this uh, system of linear equations and and we will find out how many uh, solutions are there or how many linearly independent solutions are there or in other words we call the generators of the solution of this system of homogeneous equations and from there we will find out what is the what is the dimension of the kernel what is the uh, what are the basis of the kernel. So, we need to solve finally the system of equations. So, let us put in this uh, matrix form. So, the matrix is 1 minus 1 1 and 1 the coefficient matrix 2 minus 2 3 4 and this 3 minus 3 4 and 5. And again we need to just uh, convert into the reduced echelon form which we have done just before and now we can easily find it out because this is the pivot here and this is the pivot. So, corresponding to this uh, x this is corresponding to y this is corresponding to z and this is corresponding to y and this is corresponding to t. So, here these are the columns where we do not have a pivot. So, these are the free variables which we call. So, there are two free variables and that will define exactly the nullity or the dimension uh, of the null space and uh, that will be 2 here. So, the dimension of this kernel is clear that is going to be 2 and we have to find the basis for that we have to uh, uh, write down its solution now. So, writing the solution out of this. So, first we will assume uh, these free variables. So, that was y and this t these are the free variables. So, we will take some values for this free variables and then. So, let us take for this t is equal to mu 1 and for y we uh, take mu 2 some number arbitrary number because we can choose these y and t whatever we like these are the free variables. So, we have chosen this mu 1 and mu 2 and then we can compute the others. So, for example, the z from this equation z plus 2 t is equal to 0. So, z will be minus 2 t or minus 2 times mu 1. So, that will be the z and from the equation number 1 we can get this x that will be coming out as uh, mu 1 plus mu 2. So, we have this t z and x all uh, and also y here with mu 2. So, we can write down in, in a matter in this vector form x y z t will be this uh, mu 1 the, the constant here and this we can collect now for x x is 1 the coefficient here for y it is 0 for z it is uh, minus 2 and from t it is 1. So, similarly for with mu 2 also we can collect the coefficients here. So, in x we have mu 2. So, with 1 and then here y also we have this mu 2 which is 1 and this z also has this mu 1 which is minus 2. 
no no it does not have mu 2 so here 0 and also this t does not have mu 2 so this coefficient is 0. So, we have written this x y z the solution in terms of this mu 1 and mu 2 we can play now with mu 1 mu 2 we can give any values to mu 1 and mu 2 and we can keep on generating uh, the solution here of this system of equation uh, and the solution set is nothing but the kernel of f. So, here these are the two generators which generates the solution or they span the solution also these two vectors are linearly independent. So, we have this uh, linearly independent vectors which can span the whole kernel of f. So, naturally these two vectors will form the basis and the dimension of this basis here will be 2. So, these uh, two vectors form the basis of the of the kernel f and the dimension di dimension or the nullity which we call is already there the dimension of the kernel or the nullity of this f which was clear also from the number of uh, these free variables which are 2 here. So, we can uh, just uh, get the dimension or the nullity and also the basis simply. Now, the another example where we have u v and it is also given that the f u some map on u is 4 1 1 1 and also f on v it is uh, minus 5 1 1 uh, minus 5 1 and minus 3 3 and we assume that this f is a linear map from this r 3 to r 4 because it maps this elements r 3 this u and v are from r 3 and the output is in r 4. So, these maps from r 3 to r 4 and what is the question now that if w is given as 544 and y is given as uh, 217 then can we find this f w and f y. Yeah, we know only that f u is given and f v is given, but uh, we want to find now what will be the f w the w vector is given as 544 and this y is given as 217 and we want to find this f w and f y and f is a linear map. So, what do we need, uh, know about the linear map uh, this additive property that f on u plus v is equal to f u plus f v. So, what we can think here that if this w we can write down in terms of this u and v if. So, if we can write down this 5 4 4 in terms of uh, the vectors u and v then we can find out what is the f of w if we can find uh, if we can write this w as a linear combination of this uh, u and v then we can also find out uh, the the f and similarly with y also if we can write down this y as a linear combination of u and v then we can apply this transformation f on y and we can write down in terms of u and v uh, and that uh, will be the the image of this y so, let us try now if, how, if we can write we can express this uh, w as a linear combination of u and v that means, the w can be write some mu 1 u and mu 2 u uh, for some uh, scalars uh, mu 1 and mu 2. So, to do so we have to now again form this augmented matrix to solve this system of equations here for mu 1 and mu 2. So, here u was 1 1 3. So, that will be placed here in the column. Uh, when when we write down these uh, system of equations. So, the first equation uh, we will get this 1 times mu 1 2 3 times mu 2 uh, is equal to uh, this uh, the first component of w that is 5 there. The second equation will be mu 1 2 mu 2 is equal to 4 the third equation will be 3 mu 1 plus uh, minus 2 mu 2 is equal to 4. So, out of those that system of equations here from this linear combination. So, from those uh, this system of equations we can uh, write down this augmented matrix and this augmented matrix is given here. So, now out of this augmented matrix we have to get this reduced form. So, this 1 3 5 and this is simple here. So, we can subtract it and then further. So, we will get this reduced form and from this reduced form we will now observe that this is the uh, pivot here this is also the pivot. So, the first column has a pivot second column has a pivot and everything is consistent here the full row is 0. So, we can find out the mu 1 and mu 2. So, here the mu 1 
is uh, is coming to be 1 and mu 2 is coming to be this 2 out of these two equations now. So, we have solved this uh, we have solved that uh, this w we can represent in terms of u and v as uh, u times 2 uh, v. So, the w is 2 u plus v and once we have this relation we can apply now the linear transformation. So, f w will be 2 times the f u plus f v and then uh, the 2 times the f u we know and this f v we know and then we add it to, to get this uh, here uh, 3 3 and minus 3 5. So, then the key point here was that if we can represent this w as a linear combination and then we applied the linearity of this uh, this map here to get get this uh, value of this f w. Now, if we try to do for the y again the same steps. So, uh, now the y is this 2 1 7 and we have this u and v. So, again we will try to express as a linear combination of u and v to this y and again we will get this augmented matrix that is 1 1 3 and then we have 3 2 minus 2 the right hand side that is y here. So, that is 2 1 7 and again we will convert into the row reduced form. So, we got this um, row reduced form now. Now, the problem here is uh, the inconsistency the last column the, the rightmost column here has uh, a pivot element here this 12 which should not happen in this case and now because of this we have this inconsistency in the system and which leads to the non existence of the solution. So, here we cannot express this y as a linear combination of this u and v and therefore, the system is inconsistent it is inconsistent and this uh, as a reason that we cannot uh, we cannot compute this f of uh, f of y because the information given uh, is, is not sufficient here. So, we cannot compute this f y from the given information. Well, so now there is another nice result that if t is a linear map from this r n to r m t is a linear map from r n to r m then there is always an m cross n matrix a such that uh, this t x you can represent in terms of this matrix a. So, whatever we do with the t x that linear map we can actually work with the matrix a just multiply to this x because working with the matrices uh, are much easier and we know many operations and many other properties of the matrices. So, instead of working with a linear map which is not given in the in the form of the matrix it is better to have a matrix form and then we can work with the matrix we can do all operations whatever we want on this map with with this uh, matrix here a. So, that is a proof is very simple here we can uh, define the standard basis in R n which are given as this 1 0 0 and this 1 0 1 0 0 and so on. These are the standard basis from this vector space R n and this t is a for any x now in R n. So, any vector we take from this x uh, x from R n what we can because these are the bases here these are the standard bases we can represent this x in the form of these bases that means, this x can be represented as x 1 e 1. So, x 1 x 2 x 3 x n are the components of this x vector. So, we can represent with the help of these standard basis this x as x 1 e 1 plus x 2 e 2 and so on plus x n uh, e n or in short we can write down in the form of summation that i goes from 1 to n and x i e i. So, this x which is a general element in, in R n we have represented as a linear combination of that is those standard bases and now if we apply this t the linearity of t will implies that t x t of x will be the t of this here the summation and basically we can take uh, we can apply on these t i's. So, we have this i 1 to n and this t is applied on this vector i here because of the linearity this is the linearity property that t of this x 1 e 1 x 2 e 2 and so on will be uh, x 1 into t e 1 plus x 2 into t e 2 and this x n into t e n. So, that will be the will be the relation here 
and uh, how we define now the a which will be exactly corresponding to this map t or will function as this map t there. So, a now we can define whose columns are these vectors here t e 1, t e 2, t e n. So, these columns if we put into this matrix a then uh, this a x will be nothing but exactly this product which is the T x. So, if you remember from this uh, definition of this uh, matrix uh, product which we have uh, seen uh, several times. So, that is uh, nothing but uh, this is this column 1 uh, will be multiplied to this x 1, the column 2 will be multiplied to x 2 and so on the column n will be multiplied to x n. That is another way of looking at the, 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 the matrix vector product and here exactly we have used that idea that this x 1 multiplied by this vector t e 1. So, t e 1 if we place as a first column in our matrix and similarly this x 2 and then this t e 2 we place in the matrix's uh, second column. So, this product here a x will be exactly this one which is nothing but the t x. So, the t x is exactly the a x. So, by this simple idea what we have seen that uh, any linear map which maps the elements of R n to R m, we can have a matrix here corresponding to this T map, we can have a matrix A of order again this m cross n and whose, uh, whose columns we can easily compute with the help of this T uh, E i's and this will give exactly the, the map which is given as uh, this from R n to R m. So, now let us just quickly go through uh, some examples here. So, this was uh, the one example which we have already discussed before. So, this T x y is given as this, uh, this is from R 2 to R 3. So, this is an element from R 2 and then we are getting this element R 3. So, now how to get this uh, corresponding matrix A. The idea was that we compute this T E 1. So, T E 1 means the E 1 here is, is nothing but uh, this 1 and 0. So, the T E 1, so 1 and 0, so y will be set to 0. So, we will get 2 minus 1 4, 2 minus 1 4. Similarly, we can uh, get the uh, T E 2 and uh, that will be just the one, uh, 0 and 1 there. So, 0 and 1, so we will get 3 here 5 and minus 3. So, that will be the second element and then in A we will place them. So, 2 minus 1 4 as the first column and 3 5 and minus 3 as the second column of this matrix A and we know that now that this T x the given uh, linear map here which was defined uh, in this way we can also define as A and this element of this R 2 because this a into this x y will exactly give us uh, this linear map because if we multiply a with this uh, x y. So, here we have uh, 2 3 minus 1 5 and 4 uh, minus 3 and with this x y what do we get here 2 times x and plus 3 times y the second component minus x plus 5 y then we have 4 x and minus 3 y. So, we are getting exactly the same uh, mapping which was defined there with the with the help of this t the first component this 2 x plus 3 y then minus x plus 5 y 4 x minus 3 y. So, the given uh, linear map we have defined with the help of this matrix A. One more example we can look quickly here this R 3 to R 3 which was just given here by this element from R 3 and then here also we have this element from R 3. This is the first component then we have uh, we have uh, this is first component and then we have the second component we have the third component. So, this maps R 3 to this R 3 and you have the same idea which we can use again which we have used before uh, that uh, this T of E 1 we will compute that will be coming 9 5 9 from here and then 5 from here and 55 from there T E 2 and then T E 3 we can apply on the standard basis and then we can place them in the columns that will be exactly our matrix here 9 5 55 here 5 minus 12 0 and 35 
27 and minus 42. So, we have this uh, A here the matrix A and that will define this linear map the given linear map as this matrix vector product. So, again this working with the matrices are much easier. So, this is one way where we can uh, uh, where we can represent a linear map with the help of this uh, um, matrices. So, here what we have done today this uh, from the linear map we have uh, done some examples where we have computed the kernel f also the dimension of the kernel f uh, as well as the image f and its dimension. Further we have also looked at this using matrices how to define the linear maps whenever there is a linear map T which maps R n elements to this R m elements we can always define a corresponding matrix A which will work as this A x instead of this T x. So, that is very useful as I said before this working with matrices are much easier. So, here these are the references we have used for preparing the lectures and thank you very much.